Good morning. So I'm Vince, and I'm the tallest guy up here, and I can't stand being behind a podium, so I'm going to come out here. Um, I'm with the Stream and Wetlands Foundation, and uh, years ago, I used to work for the Natural Resource Conservation Service. Anybody here with NRCS today? Anybody here with the Soil and Water Conservation District? None. Anybody here just because they love wetlands? All right. Um, so, so uh, the Stream and Wetlands Foundation, real quick, uh, I, I guess before I do that, I want to make sure I, th I thank my wife. She's not here today, but today's our anniversary. So I can't stay here the whole time. I have to leave once I'm done. But uh, uh, this is our 34th anniversary today. So uh, uh, I want to thank Dr. Mitch for inviting me to be here today. Uh, I've known Bill for almost 20 years now. Uh, we've helped Bill back in the days when he started building his Olentangy Wetland Research Park at OSU, the kidneys. And who here has been to the kidneys? Anybody been there? Okay, quite a few of you. Um, and now we're helping Bill with these little teeny tiny wetland mesocosms. And he's going to speak a little bit about them today. Um, so the foundation, we do mitigation banking. And it's to offset impacts to the wetlands through the 401 and 404 permitting program. It's a very tiny tool in the toolbox of restoring wetland habitat, and it's very expensive. Typical wetlands from a wetland mitigation standpoint are $50,000 an acre. The challenge is, can we do it better? Can we make them more efficient? Can we do it for less money? The next question is, as we look at the problem that Scudder and Gale particularly talked about today, and you're going to hear from a lot of the academics today, it's a huge problem. But it was just a week or two ago we celebrated putting a man on the moon. If we can put a man on the moon, I think we can fix this problem. It's also a problem that's not unique to Lake Erie. Ohio River has problems. Inland Lakes, St. Mary's, for example, has problems. The Gulf of Mexico has problems. I watched the news last week. Who watched the news last week and saw the uh, uh, sargasm, I think is the name of the, the vegetation. They have all these problems with now in the Atlantic. And this vegetation plume starts off the coast of Africa and ends up in Mexico and Cancun. And it just covers the beaches on a daily basis, and it now goes all summer long. They used to only have this problem for a few weeks out of the year. Now it's all summer. So these are huge problems, and, and Lake Erie is just kind of a pimple on a hog's hind end. So how do we figure it out? Um, you know, I, I, years ago, uh, Gail, we were participants in a Western Lake Erie Basin uh, consortium. It was all these different federal and state agencies trying to figure out the problem. For years, when I worked with NRCS, we were trying to reduce phosphorus. And we had all these conservation tillage systems, and we thought we whipped it. By mid-1990s, we met our phosphorus goals. Here we are in 2019, and we still have the same dash gum darn problem. And so how do we get to there? Uh, 15, 20 years ago, somebody asked me, I'm, I'm a wetlands guy. Uh, they asked me the question, how do we fix this problem? And I said, I think we need one acre of wetland for every 20 acres. And if we applied that math, and it was just a wild ass guess, I'm sorry, but it was just on the back of a napkin looking at the engineering side of it. I'm an engineer. And so if we applied that, we need 150,000 to 200,000 acres of wetlands in the Black Swamp, the former Black Swamp, to try to address the problem. And, and it's a huge scale. And if we look at the money, it would take about three or four billion dollars. That sounds like a lot of money, but they just passed the federal budget, 700 billion for defense. So we only need a fraction of that, like three tenths of 1% of the, of the defense budget. So we can do it. We can put a man on the moon, and I think we can solve this problem. I'm going to turn this over to Bill, but I have one ask, and I've been asking this for a long time. Really would like to encourage the, the uh, leadership of the state uh, to try to find a watershed where we can take all the best practices that we know and all the evolving best practices that we're trying to figure out and apply them. Measure what's coming out at the end of the stream today. Apply all those practices and see what happens. And, and unfortunately right now, all I've seen, and when I work for NRCS, and I love that agency, it was, it was what started me in my career today, um, we've always done a shotgun approach. We pour billions and billions of dollars into farm programs, conservation programs, but it's just shotgun approach. 
we don't have an idea of how a watershed scale approach would apply. So we need to find, I still advocate, 10, 20 square mile watershed where we can go in and do the best of the best and figure out how it, does, how it responds before we start pouring more and more and more billions of dollars in a, in a continued shotgun approach. So that's my challenge. Now we have all these smart people that are professors and academics to help, but these are complex problems and we need their help. But they're also social problems, engineering problems, economic problems, legal problems, government problems, and it's gonna take a lot of us all working together to try to fix it. So without further ado, I'll turn the mic back over to you, Bill. Mm -hmm. And I believe we're gonna have an opportunity for some questions. Yeah. Correct? 